It's the unhappy hour. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to a very special, very, very, very special episode of the unhappy hour and what the hell, we might as well just call it the happy hour. Why would I be saying that? Cleveland Cavaliers have just won the NBA Draft Lottery for the second time in two years. And of course, a few years before that, they got Kyrie Irving and a guy named, uh, well, some former king who took his talents to South Beach. But now, is it possible that that former king is going to be coming back to Cleveland? Will Kevin Love be coming to Cleveland? Man, there's a whole bunch of questions going on right now, and I love it. This is one of those drafts where you want to be one, two, or three. And oh, brother. Who do you go with? Jabari Parker? Joel Embiid? Who do you go with? Andrew Wiggins? <laughs> I don't know, but I love it. I think it's fantastic. Hey, everybody, if you haven't checked out what we're doing at thenewamericanmedia.com, please check out our homepage. Look around, thenewamericanmedia.com. Uh, go on YouTube, check out our page, youtube.com slash the new American media. Uh, just so many archived, interesting things over there. So peruse around for a little bit. On Facebook, do a search for the new American media and like the page. And on Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. So let's do this. Let's just get right to it. We're going to welcome special guest Zach Barris. He's a lifelong Cleveland sports fan and NBA scout. And he's been on our show for quite some time. Oh, man, I, I'm so excited for this. The Cavs franchise really, really, really needed it. Yes, we had the number one pick last year, but it wasn't one of those strong drafts like the LeBron year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a strong draft this year. So we'll get him into the show and pick his brain apart for you. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Uh, you know, welcome to the happy hour. <laughs> I'll actually call it the happy hour for once. I'm 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 excited as hell, buddy. Hey, How you doing? Two weeks ago during the draft, it was the happy hour too. So, <laughs> all right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, well, by the way, if you're not following Zach on Twitter, do so. He's at Z Barris. That's Z B A R I S. So, Zach, this 1.7 percent chance to get it, and despite the fact that Bill Simmons hates all things Cleveland, and we should hate all things Bill Simmons, uh, yes, the Cavs actually got the draft pick. Uh, what What are your thoughts? Speechless, to say the least. I, 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 don't, I mean, I, I called this earlier in the day. I was, I was, you know, sitting around. I was doing work, and I, I was talking to someone, and they go, "Where do you think the Cavs? You, you think the Cavs are going to win?" I go, "Guarantee they wind up with a top three pick." I don't know how, but I had this gut feeling all day. I didn't think they were going to wind up with number one. I said, "I think they'll wind up with number three. And I'm sitting there at the gym on the elliptical, and I see, you know, the TV's obviously on mute. I'm reading the subtitles, and I see, you know, keep getting past, keep getting past, and I go, "Okay." I go, oh my God, the Cavaliers just got a top three pick. You got to be kidding me. So I'm on the phone with a friend who doesn't quite understand how the lottery works. And I go, dude, how about this? He goes, yeah, dude, the Cavaliers keep jumping. I go, no, they're going to be in the top three, dude. I was like, you don't get it. They're in the top three guaranteed already. And he's like, what, what do you mean? And, like, and he's still getting excited. I was like, I was like once, once you jump out of your position, the Cavaliers cannot draft four, five, six, seven, or eight. It's either nine or below or they're drafting in the top three. That's how the ping pong balls bounce, and that's how it works. I'm telling you, I so, still I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand it. And right away, they put a little uh, little arrow in an a, or an asterisk or something, and it said uh, Cleveland guaranteed a top three pick. I, I know I heard you just explain it, but can you try to explain it one more time? It's, it's difficult for me to explain it, but okay, like I said, it's okay. So if you're not in the top three, the only way you can get into the top three is if your ping pong balls come out and you jump someone. So that means is, is no matter what, the Cavaliers would not have wound up with picks four through eight. They could only go backwards. You can only go backwards on your slot, not ahead if it's not one to three. So if you're drafting six, you're not going to be drafting fourth. If you're slotted six, you will not be drafting fourth. You can only go down or you'll be in the top three. So that's how it works. So when the ball is bounced like that, Cleveland automatically had jumped to the top three. And what happened is with those picks, when that happened, it created – it was great for Cleveland in the sense that here's what it just did. And here's what it did to a couple of other teams. 
it basically took the Lakers and put them in a much tougher spot to get Kevin Love now that they're dropping down to seven. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Detroit just lost their lottery pick to Charlotte because it's top eight protected. Okay, explain that with the whole trade thing. Detroit, Charlotte, explain that. So Detroit and Charlotte, there was a few years ago, there was a top eight protected pick. And Detroit wound up, you know, top eight protected Detroit was seeded eight. So as long as no one jumps them, the odds are that someone jumps them is about two and a half percent that that they would be jumped, two percent that they would be jumped. And it happened. So Detroit, now that it's the number nine pick, have to give that pick over to Charlotte. So Charlotte must be thrilled. Something for nothing. So they they, they won tonight. They're partying tonight. Eric Gordon, yeah. And now the Cavaliers wind up with the number one overall pick. This gives you options beyond options. You take Joel Embiid. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause up, pause on the options because I got to clear clear up the uh, the Lakers connection as well. This is my uh, well, you know, I don't know my my quasi hometown. I'm 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 still going to be Indians, Cavs, Browns, Buckeyes, but I, I live in L.A. So explain but the Kevin the Love. Zone, every, every, yeah. Everybody who's not well, it depends. I'm not a bandwagoner, so I always hate it. I'm not a Laker fan either, either but I'm I'm curious. You know, I'm 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 so, curious. So here's what happened. So the Lakers basically were, you know, at one point there were six really elite players in this draft. And you have, basically I'll go in order, and I'm not going in any specific order, other than you have your t- Tier 1 players. In that Tier 1, I put Andrew Wiggins, Jabari Parker, and potentially Joel Embiid. Your Tier 2 players, you've got, you've got Dante Exum, you've got Julius Randle, and you've got Marcus Smart. Those are your top six in this draft. Okay. Those are your top six. And... After that, that's where you have your fall off. You've got Aaron Gordon. You've got Aaron Gordon the next year. I mean, like I said, you can still draft an All Star. So pick seven through ten, it's possible. There's Dario Sart. There's Doug McDermott. There, I mean, I don't think McDermott's going to be an All Star, but I think McDermott could be a really decent NBA player. He's a great shooter. You know, and bodes well for the NBA. So I, I think that I think those those are your three tiers right there. You know, you've got your tier ones or potential superstars. Although I think Exum has that too, and I think Julius Randle has a chance to be a perennial All Star too. Um, you know, he's, he right now is my pick for Rookie of the Year, is Julius Randle. It's going to be him or Javari Parker, I have a feeling. But that doesn't mean long-term potential. I just think those are the two guys that are the most NBA-ready, and I think it's Julius Randle right now. Just instantly ready, plug and play. The, and that's what they're saying about Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater. Like, his game might translate where he could jump in right away and do okay, but, like, some of the other guys might have a higher ceiling, perhaps, if everything Yeah, yeah, right. it's all about ceiling. When, you, when you're looking at guys, you know, unless you're going to win a championship this year, you know, and Javari Parker, and here's the thing is, and I'm telling you right now, the national media is starting to say it, what I've been, been saying all along. This tonight increased the Cavs' chances at getting LeBron back significantly. I'm not saying it puts him in a Cavalier uniform, but if Miami, if Miami loses this series to Indiana, which I'm not saying they will, but if they do, book him on a one-way ticket. I, I, I'm willing to guarantee that if they lose this series at this point. Wow. Just yeah. saying. Because at that point you can write you can write in who your head coach wants to be. You know, Calipari will be right there again. Anyone they want will come to coach that team. <laughs> That's what I'm saying though. I, I'm, I'm being 100 percent serious. No, Anyone. I, I'm I'm thinking about it now. It's like, hey, would you like to come coach LeBron James, Kyrie Irving? You know, and then it's like, do, do you say Embiid, Wiggins. M- 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 Wiggins, Parker? Or do you say Kevin Love? Can you get Love and one of these draft picks? Like, I, I'm just. I think it's possible. Here's another thing the Cavaliers have that people don't realize. I don't know if it'll take the number one to get Kevin Love, because no other team's offering up anywhere close to that. Now right. this is my, what it takes. You have a future guaranteed lottery pick from Memphis starting in 2015 to 2019. It's guaranteed lottery. And Memphis will wind up hitting the lottery in the next few years. They are an older team. They're, well, they're not an older team, but they're going to lose the majority of those guys in free agency within the next two years, three years. So it's, it's a very, it's a very, very likable pick by NBA teams. It's something that teams look down the road, especially nowadays, and say, wow, that could be a top three, top four pick in a couple of years. You know, we're going to trade for that. Also, you have two young players right now in Thompson and Waiters and Anthony Bennett, three players that will all be put on the market. Now, that's what you have to offer up. So in a trade, would it take Bennett and Waiters in that future pick or Thompson and Waiters to get that future pick? I mean, in the future pick, to get Kevin Love? Minnesota might go for that. You know, you're, I mean, Anthony Bennett, trust me, still has a very high ceiling just because he didn't perform last year. He started playing well at the end of the year last year. And nobody in the draft besides Oladipo was even relatively serviceable last year. Well, and don't don't forget, they actually just had uh, what his tonsils taken out. You know, so he's had sleep apnea. He came in out of shape. And Anthony Bennett next year, I, I'm really expecting to see a big leap in his game, more consistency, more He should have a big minutes. leap, but if, if you can get Kevin Love for him and Waiters, 
you know, I think Minnesota might be able to pull the trigger on that deal. I think it's something they might think of. It, it would not surprise me. Like I said, Minnesota is desperate. They're either going to lose Kevin Love or they're going to get something in return from. I think the Lakers just lost their shot at Kevin Love any chance they had because now, now you're in that third tier of players when trading for Kevin Love. I think they have a much more likely shot. I think the Lakers wind up with Darren Williams, which I think would be very stupid to trade the seventh overall pick and some future talent for Darren Williams because I don't think Darren Williams is that good. I think he's very overrated. And why do you want to put him with an aging Kobe? I just don't get it. I don't think it's something that equates to success in the NBA. I, I, I don't like these trades that like that. Like I said, you need to build, like I said, the Lakers should just build through the draft for a couple of years and then go out in free agency and kill free agency in a year. That's what they should do. Have a good draft this year. Have to get a high lottery pick next year. Get your chance at Jaleel Okafor if you have that chance. If Kobe isn't healthy, because you will be up there. And you know, go and make your move. But Jim Boss and Mitch Kupchak are not going to be, you know, they're not going to sit there tightly and they're not going to sit there with patience. You know, because L.A. is still under the impression it's L.A., which it still is. But at the same time, they're not the number one in show. They're not the number one show in town right now. They really aren't. That's very interesting to think about. Uh, of, of course, of course, the Clippers are going to be uh, dragging the whole city through the mud with, as the Sterlings fight this out. I That's mean, not there, there's plenty quick. of more Lakers fans than Clippers fans in L.A. Don't get me wrong there. You know, three and a half years ago, there were no Clipper fans. I think there's going to be a few more Cavs fans, uh, <laughs> depending on, yeah, on that, who. Yeah, you had that fat schmuck Ben Mahler, and that was about it. And excuse me when I say that, uh, the guy's a schmuck, so... I could care less for the guy. I couldn't care less for the guy. You know, he's one of the worst in the national media, and I, I don't even understand how that idiot has a job. But we'll get to that later. And the guy just—I I don't understand what, what what his infatuation with insulting Cleveland is. So, um, him and Tim, but, him and Tim McCarver. While we're at it, but but he was one of the few. He was one of the few loyal, loyal Clipper fans. And I knew a couple in Arizona. I knew one in Arizona. And that was it. So, and I knew a couple of my friends out in LA were loyal Clipper fans too. So I'll give them that. And you know, they they stuck by him and everything. But, you know, looking back on it, I think this really hurts the Lakers' chances at a trade for Kevin Love and increases their shot at Darren Williams, which if I were a Laker fan, I would much rather have that draft pick than Darren Williams. At the, at, yeah, at this point, I mean, hell, the, the Nets have a lot of decisions they they got to figure out. I mean, Brooklyn, shh, they got a huge payroll. I don't know. I, you know, they didn't really get too much out of it this year. I mean, playoffs were fine, but... I don't know. That, that That's a team almost like the Celtics. You looked at them and, and just you see them aging. You, you just kind of go, well, where is this going? You know, uh, The Celtics are one of those teams that need to be in complete rebuilding mode, too. Do they take a guy like, you know, if Dante Exum is available on the board, do you go and you trade Rondo? Yeah, I would. You know, I think you need to get – like I said, Rondo's not old, but your, your goal is to get younger. You know, you got to be in that – you got to be in that phase where you're going and you're okay. You know, if I, you know if we have to, we're gonna have a couple of years of high lottery picks. You know, it's just something you have to look at. You know, Cleveland went big time with Chris Grant on the last two drafts. You know, I've talked about it nonstop on this show. You know, like I said last year, you know, I don't know how many better options you had other than Oladipo, other than Bennett. You know, and you really, really screwed it up with Waiters a few years ago. But like I said, Waiters has potential in a trade. You know, especially packaging those guys together, there is potential. So. You know, and, and plus, later, plus later, Anderson Verja would look good on a team that needs someone That's another like thing, that. too. You can trade Verja. You have a lot of options to move these guys, and it suddenly makes Cleveland, you know, it's a, desire, a desirable coaching position. David Griffin, you know, he's a respect, I think he's respect, well-respected around the NBA. He's a lot more than Chris Grant, and he doesn't base everything off entirely analytics, which you cannot do in the NBA, and that's what, you know, another problem is, too, when you're basing everything off of analytics, studies tend to show that shooting guards will place the highest it is due through analytical projections, shooting guards and small forwards, shooting guards and point guards place the uh, place their highest projections just through those, just because they they're always they always have the ball. It doesn't take in you know usage rates. Some some of the time it does not in factor into that. So when you're looking at potential, you know a lot of times the you know, the smaller guys come up on top, and you don't see guys like centers. So when the Cavaliers passed on Drummond a few years ago and Harrison Barnes, you know they did what they did, and you know taking Tristan instead of Clay Thompson. So. You know, they did what they did, and I think they looked at Tristan's long-term potential. And like I said, Tristan, I thought it was there, but looking at it, Tristan's probably a 12-9 and nine guy is what he is. You know, he's a good seventh man on a good team. But not not a good top five. No, I mean, he can start for he can start for a team, but I, I don't think he is a – I think he's a better bench piece than he is to be, you know, to be an above average – he's not an above average starter. He's an average starter. 
you know, he has his nights where he'll put up 27 and 12. I've watched it. You know, I said, okay, this is the breakout game. The next, then we watch the next game, and he's got two points and four rebounds. Wow, it kind of sounds so, kind of sounds like a certain Pacers big man that's been a little up and down lately. But the thing is, Hibbert has much higher potential than you know than Tristan Thompson. That's another thing too. Is Hibbert's right. potential is much higher. Hibbert's seven foot two. Uh, Tristan's Tristan's a little bit undersized, six nine. So when when reading in the facts, I tend to think, from what I understand, is that the Cavaliers really like Andre Wiggins. I think Joel Embiid would be a nice fit too. But I tend to think you wind up going with Wiggins. He's going to put asses in the seats. And he's the biggest name in the strip. I think Parker's the most NBA ready out of those three to contribute right away. And I think he'll have a great rookie season, you know, and I think he's going to be huge whether he goes in Milwaukee or Philly. Um, but I mean, Philadelphia better, Philadelphia better try something because the problem is if they wind up with Embiid sitting there at three and Milwaukee decides to take Parker, they're really screwed because they took Nerlens Noel last year. Right. Yeah. You, what do you have? Two big men? Uh huh. So uh, I, I don't know if that's a match. You know, it's not going to be Tim Duncan and David Robinson. It's just not. But, you know, I, I don't – I think Philly ultimately might be the one that team that screwed. They, they needed a top-two pick. They need to have they need to have either Wiggins or Parker in a, in a, in a 76 or uniform, not Joel Embiid. So, like I said, Philadelphia is another candidate to trade out of that pick. I don't think they do. I think Philadelphia is going to try something, though. It could be something on draft night working out something with Milwaukee. But is, know, there, is there a way yeah. we could trade with them? Yeah, there is. I mean, maybe maybe the Cavaliers move to three and pick up the number ten pick in a trade too. I mean, you never know. If Philly's that because they say Philly... that's actually a really good idea. I, no, I'm liking this because um, uh, they were kind of starting to fall in love with uh, oh, these names escaped me now. The the shooter uh, probably going to be. The... Yeah, McDermott. Thank you. Jeez, uh, that I was hearing a lot of stuff that they're falling in love with McDermott, who might be there nine to fourteen or so. And if we could maybe McDermott, get the guy McDermott that we... will probably be there at 9 to 14, somewhere in that range. And that's the thing is, okay, now you're sitting there and saying, okay, do we take Javari Parker? I mean, you're not going to take Parker and Doug McDermott. But if you can say, okay, we're going to land Joel Embiid and we're going to land Doug McDermott, okay, that's a different story. You know, then we've got a score. We've got a scoring space out the bench. We're going to get what Luke Jackson was supposed to be. <laughs> I remember that. Still waiting on that. No, I'm being serious, though. I'm being serious. Well, yeah, no, I'm being serious, too. I'm supposed to be. Yeah, uh, we've, had, we've had a lot of <laughs> moves that haven't quite panned out exactly. But, yeah, um, that would be very interesting, knowing that, that they're not going to want uh, Embiid. You know, that, that, that would be very interesting. How do you get into one I, I just two? don't think Philadelphia, I think you can put a little hanger on Philadelphia saying, okay, here's the deal. No matter what, we're taking Wiggins one. And if Milwaukee goes and selects Parker two, you're screwed. You're screwed. Because who are you going to take? You're going to take Julius Randle and then pass up on a really top-tier talent? You know, you're not going to take Dante Exum. You already have Michael Carter-Williams. So there you go. We're going to screw you over here. I think, I think that might be one of the philosophies going through David, you know, through Griffin's head, too. I think it's one of them you have to think about. Now, I, I remember this. I remember this. You have been saying that Andrew Wiggins is, is the, the – you, you have just thought he was the best thing since sliced bread for, what, about from, a year and a half I, now? From, from what I saw at the Nike Hoop Summit a few years ago. You were blown you go back away. Hey, yes. I talked about it two years ago on the we've, we've talked We've ago. talked about Andrew Wiggins a lot on but this I'm program. Saying, but when he was a high school junior, yeah. when he was a high school junior, I spoke of him. You remember that. I, I remember. He's been on my he, radar for a long time, and you've been on this show for I, at least three years, or give or take three years. Yeah, and I remember telling you, saying, watch out for this kid. He's the best potential. I mean, I, he did not have a great college season. He had some big games, but he was invisible. He was sometimes invisible. He really was down the stretch, which worries me a little bit. But like I said, we've seen the same thing from LeBron at points in big games early in his career. Fair enough. I mean, even even two years ago, you saw it. You don't see that anymore, though, from LeBron. Don't forget that. He, you he, don't see any invisibility from LeBron anymore. He, he's always he's always there now. You know, since the Dallas series, but he was literally invisible for that series. You know, for the end of it. Right. And and by the way, so, Pacers are up fifty-one to fifty in, in the it, third it, right now. It's the Heater back up. 52-51. Ah, LeBron just got... had a pretty LeBron just had a pretty sick land, so <laughs> I can't scoop you on anything. Um, no, but but the, how, I, would you have thought two years ago, three two and a half years ago, that the Cavs might be sitting here with Kyrie Irving, with last year's number one pick, and with the chance to draft Andrew Wiggins? No, but but if you, if you gave me the chance to go back and win this lottery two years ago, I'd rather have Kyrie and Anthony Davis than either of these two. Anthony Davis, like I said, is Anthony Davis is hands down the guy who's going to win an MVP in the next couple of years. Yeah, he's he's kind of ro- he's kind of rocking it. 
I, I mean, Davis is a star. Like I said, I, I, I said when the, the, the Pelicans were drafting a couple of years ago, that I, I don't know if I'd be at the point where I wouldn't even consider giving up Kyrie Irving for that number one overall pick. I, that's how much I like Anthony Davis. I, I've always loved Davis. I've always been a huge fan of the guy. I, I've, I've loved his game since he was in college. Like I said, I'll never forget talking right after the national championship game a few years ago, you know, when that game was down in New Orleans. I will never forget that, saying to myself, you, you know, this is a guy, I didn't even look at the stat sheet until the end of the game. I said, he only put up six points. I said, he was the best player in that game by far, and yet he only had six points. That's just, he, he was such a difference maker without him scoring, it didn't matter. And that's the player Davis is. And then now this year, he was able to add an offensive game, you know, to his repertoire, and look how good he was. I mean, there were nights where he was putting up 30, 35 points. And, I mean, this kid is going to be a star. He's athletic. He's a freakish athlete on defense. He guards the perimeter like no other. Don't forget, this was a point guard who was committed to Cleveland State when he was a junior in high school. Whoa, hold on, hold on. Anthony Davis? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Look it up. He's a 6'3 point guard committed to Cleveland State. <laughs> I don't know if I knew that one. Yeah. So just just a little just a little fun fact in there I wanted to throw in there, but yes, he no, was. I, I like that one. Yeah, and then he had a growth spurt, and the whole world has been different because of it. So, no. I mean, but he's one of those <laughs> players. He's just a difference maker. I think he would have been a perfect fit with Kyrie, but obviously it didn't happen. Yeah. And the Cavaliers now, you know, like I said, last year, they, you know, I remember coming on the show last year saying, it's too bad the Cavaliers chose not this year to take. They took the wrong year to tank. You remember when I said that? I, I wish you could dig it up from the archives. And I said, you know, it's great they got the number one overall pick in an untalented draft, but it's too bad they didn't get it next year. And I was thinking the same thing. I've told you this year, Zach. I said, man, you know, go figure. You know, we're competing hey, for I, a playoff spot. We go out and we trade for Luol Dang. We get Spencer Hawes. You know, we're making moves to get in, you know, into the playoffs for the first time in Kyrie's career in a week east. And we can't even make that. Like, this is not the year to be on the cusp of the playoffs. You know, exactly. th- this is the last, time to last suck. Year the, last year, I said the Cavaliers won the lottery a year too late, and they won a year too early. Yeah. What I mean, they, they missed out on Anthony Davis, and they were going to miss out on Wiggins, Parker, and, and MB. Like, so, you know, but obviously that's transformed into something else. I, I'm still sh- sitting here shocked because this isn't even <laughs> – sitting there weighing options, you know, when I'm looking at my projections, I'm not sitting there looking and saying, oh, yeah, the Cavaliers, you know, I'm looking at Doug McDermott, I'm looking I'm looking at Aaron Gordon, I'm looking at other guys in Cavalier uniforms, you know, I'm looking at Gary Harris, potentially, I'm not even thinking, you know, you, you, it doesn't even come across your mind, yeah, it's one of those dream scenarios, but it doesn't really cross your mind because it doesn't, you know, the odds of it happening are so low. So what, what? you really can't even project that until, you know, you know, like I said, I run the ESPN draft lottery, you know, my draft lottery. The one time I ran it this season, the Cavaliers got the number one overall pick. <laughs> you good, sir, are the good luck charm. And, you know, and people can say that the NBA lottery is rigged as much as it wants, but here, let's, let's, face, let's face facts right now. If the lottery was rigged, do you think they would have given it to Cleveland over Boston in L.A.? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually looking here on NBA uh, uh, ESPN.com, and it says uh, the highest-rated comment says the most rigged draft ever. And then the next guy says signed Laker fans. And then someone says something tells me if the Lakers, Celtics, or Philly would have got the number one pick, you would have said the exact same thing. Exactly. You know. Exactly. That, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying here is the lottery is not rigged. It's not. They do it with the guys from Ernst and Young. There are people present in the Cavaliers, and every single team in the lottery had a representative in that room down below where, it go, where, where they choose the balls beforehand, and then they're just brought up there. So the ping pong balls are done below, and they're in front of people from Ernst & Young who were you know, sworn to tell the truth, everything. You, you, it, it is watched. Pull the balls out. You cannot you – know, it is just random. It is, it's not rigged. I'm willing to guarantee it. It, it is completely, it's completely kosher. It's, nothing is rigged. So you, you go on and you look at it, and people can say it's rigged all they want, but there are tons of idiots out there, you know, oh, conspiracy theories, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 you know, that, um, that Adam Silver owes the Cavs something. The league, if anything, wants to get rid of Dan Gilbert, not promote him. Because the last thing that was, Gilbert, oh. Gilbert says a bunch of stupid stuff all the time. You know, he's almost considered a joke among owners to some, some teams. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying he is, but, you know, the guy's been promising and promising and promising and clearly and nothing has materialized other than a casino. You know, and he hasn't even started phase two, which was supposed to be the big thing, you know, which was supposed to happen by 2014. Well, actually, you so, know, well, you know what? I was, I was, uh, I had to get my brakes checked out 
and I, I was looking in the waiting room, and it had a uh, ESPN the magazine, and it, and it said uh, it was the conspiracy theory episode, uh, the, their conspiracy theory uh, magazine, and it, it definitely included some of the drafts, especially like the 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 Patrick Ewing one. Um, Michael Jordan, did he, did he quit for a year, or was he quietly banned by David Stern? No, he was from... quietly banned by David Stern. I think it really, I think that's pretty obvious knowledge at this point that, you know, people know that. that it's not a secret anymore. He was banned for a year. Why else would the superstar of the NBA who's won three straight championships in the middle of his prime retire to play double-A baseball? Think about it. Just that's all you have to say to yourself and go, why would he retire to play double-A baseball? There you go. Your answer is right there. So you you think you think that banned. you think yes, that's he had a gambling uh, problem. He was quietly banned from the league. They kept it under wraps. Don't forget this is the days before social media. This is you know nowadays nothing like that would ever stand. But how it, how it did never, how did he move on to to be an owner of a team if that's really what happened? He got he got over his problem. I, yeah, well, plus plus he's plus he's Michael Jordan. I guess, but I mean Pete Rose is still banned from the Hall of Fame. It wasn't that Jordan was necessarily betting on basketball. It was the fact that Michael Jordan, and don't forget, Michael Jordan, when he left this league, don't forget, and I think it was was it 2000, or I mean he or he was I mean the Bulls won their last championship, and then he went and played with the Wizards. When he retired, the league was in a dead period. It really was. After he left Chicago, I mean the superstars in the NBA were Vince Carter. You know, and of course you had Kobe and Shaq, but there were no others. And you had the you had the guys in San Antonio between Robinson and Duncan. Iverson so no still. Iverson. I, Iverson. Was, the thing is, Iverson was an all star. He was not a superstar. He was glorified as a superstar. Go look at his advanced statistics. Nothing in there would indicate to you that he was ever a superstar. And so the league it, was in a, a down point at that. It's just the fact that there was there was such, you know, there was no talent in the NBA. That was the problem. And then 2003 came around, and then all of a sudden you see guys, you know, in 2003 you had guys that LeBron, you had Bosh, you had Wade, you had Carmelo come into the league. And then, in two, and then, and then you had Darren Williams, you had Chris Paul. I mean, there's superstar after superstar came into the league. You, you, there were all these guys that came in in a period of time, you know, within a four- or five-year period where, you know, you had Derrick Rose. You had all these guys come in there, and it, it, it completely changed everything. Man, I'm I'm really curious though, because I I mean, maybe I'm I'm totally out of the loop, but the the, the whole Michael Jordan gambling thing, I, I I didn't know that that was as as much of a done deal as Roswell. Something actually happened that wasn't a weather balloon. Oh yeah. Or that JFK you, you know, wasn't fun, killed by one thing. dude up up in an observatory with a with a lousy janky clunky gun that couldn't be reloaded that fast. Um, and then he's killed a couple days later to hush hush keep this quiet. I mean, like those conspiracies to me, like, come on. I, there's obviously more to the story there, but the Michael Jordan thing, I didn't know that that was as, as known. Oh yeah. It's, it's very well documented. Um, but you know, and there's some other things too to take into account, but looking at it, I mean, Cleveland went, you have to think over the last few years, Cleveland has been so irrelevant in sports other than one playoff game by the Indians. Yeah. The Browns haven't made it. The Cavaliers haven't made it and nothing has gone right for the city. And all of a sudden, yeah, you keep landing number one overall picks. But suddenly the whole thing with Johnny football, you get a big name thrown into town. Right, you're now right. getting a big name thrown into town, most likely in Wigan. You know, no matter what, you're going to probably wind up with a star out of this draft or through a trade. You're going to wind up with someone. And suddenly Cleveland has shot back in irrelevancy like they were in 2010. Or 2007, I'm sorry, when the Browns won 10 games and they were suddenly the kings of national TV all of a sudden. The Indians went to the ALCS and the Cavaliers made the finals. I'm not saying those teams are all going to be that good this year. I'm just saying, though, with, with national media attention, you're back up at that point. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm looking at the comments here, and and yeah, you're you're going to see national attention. People want to see Johnny Football play. People are going to want to see if if LeBron comes back. Hell, they're going to want to see Embiid, Wiggins, or Parker anyway. Um, I, if you I, want to see Wiggins and Kyrie play together, it's a you know, it's, I mean, it's a formidable backcourt for the future. That's gonna you know, they're gonna be. I mean, they're gonna be huge. I mean, I mean, it's something that can just be huge. I want to, sh- I want to share this. That, no, go ahead. I mean, not only does it probably change Kyrie's mind now in the fact that if the Cavaliers do select someone like Wiggins or even Embiid, you know, it doesn't matter. Kyrie's looking at this now and he goes, okay, this team maybe does have long-term potential. I wasn't going to spend the five-year $80 million. Now I am. Maybe I'm going to sign that deal now. 
Well, I'm, I'm looking at this comment here, and, and this guy, <laughs> Chris Kevin Rojas, <laughs> puts at the bottom of this article, he says, not one, not two, but three I was first overall picks since LeBron left. Was, Dan Gilbert. I was just, my, fr- my friend from L.A. just called me, and he goes, he goes, man, how did he, he goes, I was just leaving the gym, he goes, I was just leaving the gym right now, and I turned on the radio in front of the Cavs as the number one overall pick, and I go, yeah, and I go, he goes, how did that happen? And I go, not one, not two, not three. <laughs> like, I was, I was, I was, you got to be kidding me. You know, I think it's an even trade, though. You know, if, if for some reason the NBA really is rigged, you can go on it. I think three number one picks for LeBron was an ad, was a fair trade. I mean, not not as fair, obviously, but it's as fair as it can get from the league doing their thing. But the league, the league's popularity has been higher than ever. You know, finally you get a you get a superstar studded draft or a star studded. I don't want to say superstar. You get a star studded draft that's going to replenish the talent in the NBA. Where you know, like like I said last year, you really only had a, you know last year you really didn't have a star. I think Oladipo has all star potential, um, but it doesn't mean he will be an all star. You know, the draft before that, you had Anthony Davis, and you know you had some you had some good players in that draft. I mean, there were some very good players in that draft. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the draft before that, you've got Clay Thompson, you've got Kyrie Irving, you've got Kawhi Leonard. So there just haven't been a lot of great players coming out. You don't see any, you don't see any, you know, good picks going at 20, 25 like you do in some years. And this finally will allow you to replenish the talent in the NBA to be at the top. And you start from the top. Of all these teams in the lottery, if you're selecting six or seven, you still have the chance to land a star. You know, not a good player anymore. What's been for the last couple of years, you have a chance to land someone's all-star potential. And it's it's interesting that it's 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 done this way that the draft is handled this way. I'm, I'm wondering if you like the fact that the Bucks don't get. I, I mean, obviously, right now, as I will say, as a Cavs fan, yes, I love this. But I, I mean, in the NFL, if the Browns have been this consistently bad and, and we lose the number four pick, and now we're eight or so, you know, or whatever. I don't know. I just I'm I'm not I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure. I, do you, Do you think the NBA draft works? The lottery works. Um, I think it does. Is it doesn't? You know, teams can try and tank all they want, but like I said earlier, I mean, a team like Philadelphia who tanked all season to get this point might not get who they want. You know, they might they're not guaranteed at Park. They're not guaranteed Parker or Wiggins at this at this point in the draft, and I think it's a problem because why do you want to select MB to pair him up with Nerl and Noel? I just don't see that one. I just don't see that fit being a match made in heaven. Now they could do it. They could pair him up and put Noel a power forward. It's always a possibility. But do I think it happens? No. I think I think both of them are too limited offensively, and I think you'd have no scoring out of your front court at the beginning. So, yeah. you, you know, I, I'm I'm not sitting here being the ultimate Cavalier optimist. I'm really not. That's not who I am. You know that as well as I do. I've been down in the Cavs before, and I've been open about it. I think you said it's a sinking ship right now in Cleveland was the title we, we did a couple months ago. Yeah, but, I mean, but the aspect of that has completely done a 180 tonight because it now puts them any trade they want to make up. They want to land a guy like Kevin Love. He's theirs if they want him. I'm saying it doesn't mean he's theirs for more than a year, but he's theirs if they want him. And suddenly you can sit there and say, listen, this, I'm telling you, like I just said right now, if Miami for some reason does not win the championship, it, it especially the Eastern Conference Finals, he's booked a one-way ticket to Cleveland. I'm telling you that. There is your only real legitimate option this offseason. Next year, he's got a bunch of options. Next year, it'd be Cleveland and the Lakers, and how are the Lakers so suddenly desirable? The Lakers would have won the number one overall pick tonight. Completely different story, but they didn't. You know, the Lakers could have been sitting there if they would have won the number one overall pick tonight, or even top three, and said, listen, we're going to trade that pick. We're going to go and get Kevin Love. We've got Kobe in love. You know, Kobe's got two years left. LeBron can come in here. We're going to do our thing, and then we're still going to have my cap space in 2015. So, you know, we can go and get LeBron. Now they have – they've lost their shot. They've basically lost their shot at Kevin Love. They don't have enough to offer, I don't think. So how does it how does it play out then? Uh, but, but Before I figure out how this plays out, I, I didn't we'll kind of rock and roll with this here, but I just want to read you this Johnny Manziel tweet. Uh, he retweeted this one guy, Jerry, who said, Cleveland Cavs, three out of the last four number one picks. Browns get Johnny Manziel. I'm moving to Ohio. Hashtag, they have to get better. That was, Jer- that was Jerry Ferrer, the turtle from Entourage. Oh, there we are. My bad. <laughs> That's kind of a dude that we should know. Turtle. Yeah, well, he owns, my fa- he owns my favorite restaurant in LA. Fat Sal's. So. Yeah, we need to eat there oh, yeah. next time you're in town. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yes. Yeah. So... Next time I'm in town, we'll be there. All right. Well, uh, hey, he's moving to Ohio. Maybe he'll see you. Are you still over there right now? 
Uh, no, I'm not. Ah, gotcha. No, but I mean, Johnny Manziel uh, put a tweet out. He said, uh, uh, Cavs and 22 Wiggins? Question mark? Question mark? So are you saying you pick Wiggins hands down over Parker and Embiid? Listen, there's a lot that goes into it. There's workouts. There's everything. There's draft interviews. I mean, one of those players might say, I don't want to play here. You know, I'm not going to be happy here. That it suddenly it rewrites your whole draft board. It happens in the NBA. Oh. You know, you know, you also have to look at fits too. You bring in guys for workouts this summer and say, okay, listen, you know, after after studying and analyzing this guy's game, we don't think he's a good fit with Tyree Irving. We don't think he's a good fit with this player. You can you can go around the books and say that because they are, they, can, they are trying to, to to work on their chemistry. They know that something's wrong, and that's what they said. They want to find a way to gel the team. I'm not really don't, sure. Don't what forget, that's... don't forget at this stage last year when we were talking about the lottery that or we were talking about it at this time around this time right before the lottery that we were saying Nerlens Noel was the guaranteed number one overall pick and then all the stuff came out about the combine last year you know about Nerlens Noel I mean it still isn't public but like I said that this stuff that I've discussed on the show with you yeah and yeah. and you know and I told you that he wasn't going to be the number one overall pick in the days coming towards the draft I knew that I originally had Noel pegged as the number one selection guaranteed but like I said it changed all the time Sitting there, I never had Bennett pegged as the number one selection. I had Bennett pegged as the top three, top five, but nowhere near did I ever have him at number one. I never had him close to number one. I, I, I thought the Cavaliers were going to take Oladipo. I, I had a feeling they wouldn't, but that's why I thought they should have taken. If, if it was your call, you would have taken him. Oh yeah, hands out. I said that. I said that the day after the draft, I said I would have taken Oladipo. I said the night of. I remember talking. Or no, I'm sorry, we didn't do the show the night of last year. We did it the next day, and I remember saying, I, I said. You know, I said this is the guy I would have taken. I would have taken Oladipo. It wasn't close. So, what is going on with Embiid's back? That's the problem. When you're we're talking about a center with back issues, I've heard this story bode, before. It doesn't bode well. You've got Odin with the knees. You know, and that's what scares me about Embiid. I think he's a world class talent, but at the same time, he's got a lot of learning to do. He's not completely polished yet. Neither is Wiggins. Neither is Wiggins, but. But MB the back issues when you're seven feet tall worry me a lot. You saw what happened with Dwight Howard. I, Dwight Howard's still a great player, but he's not the player he once was after being plagued by a back injury. You saw that this season and last season. Hey, how about also uh, Greg Oden? I mean, different, different thing. But when you have big men with lingering injuries, they they, they tend to be multiplied. Yeah. So, I mean, based on that alone, you, you really can't go Embiid number one, right? I mean, I mean, if that's who you feel is your guy, but if it were me, that's not who I would have as my number one. I would have Wiggins at this point, at this point in time. Okay. And then, oh, man, I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's a way. W- would you rather have, like, a number two? Or uh, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, if, if we did that Sixers trade. Would you... I mean, it depends. It depends who's sitting in a tree. It all depends on who Milwaukee's going to take. And I think you can bank it and say, okay, this is who Milwaukee's going to take. Is there a way that there could be like a three-team sign-and-trade kind of deal? We're going to draft this there player? Never, and... There never are like that. There, there, it just doesn't happen. I mean, it does. Actually, we actually, I apologize. It happened with Sacramento. I believe it was Utah, you know, with the whole Jimmer for death thing. And Charlotte a few years ago, the oh. year that they took Kyrie Irving, there was a three-team trade. So is there a way you think maybe if, if we could get the person we wanted and we knew what the Bucks were going to do and... The thing is, the... you can take the person you want. Let's say they take Wiggins at one. Okay. Let's say that's who they want. Or let's say they want Embiid, and they, or they'd be happy with either of the three of them. So then you can say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Wiggins at one because that's who we know who Philly wants. If Philly's willing to give us three and ten in Thaddeus Young for them, maybe they'll, they'll be willing to do. Okay, there we go. But is, is that trading four quarters for a dollar? Not necessarily. I mean, if you like Embiid a lot, then it's not at all. Then essentially you're getting, you could be getting a dollar plus, you know, a half dollar and another good player. I'm very interested in that theory now. I'll, I'll, I'll have to mingle, uh, let, my, let my brain meander around a little when, bit. Whenever, my... whenever you look at a trade in basketball, this isn't football where you're suddenly getting, you know, like in the NBA, in the NFL draft, when you trade back, you know, and pick up an extra third or second rounder, you know, there's a difference. You know, you need 22 football players on a team. You know, 11 offense, 11 defense, it's not including, but that, that does not include special teams or anything. And it doesn't include depth. And, and the NFL is all about having depth because you have to survive injuries. Basketball, when it's five on five, one guy can control the game. Don't forget that baseball, 
totally different. Baseball is a lot like football in the fact that, okay, you know, when, when, Phil, when, when Seattle traded Randy Johnson to Houston, they got Freddie Garcia. They got a whole combination of players, and they were able to replenish their whole farm system. Look what Cleveland, they traded Bartolo Colon. They got Grady Sizemore. They got Brandon Phillips. And they got Cliff Lee. You got three stars in that trade. You got three all-stars in that trade. You know, they were all young at the time. But in the future, yeah, they traded Phelps away, but Cliff Lee won a Cy Young and Grady Sizemore was a multiple-time all-star for the Indians, so it paid off. Baseball is completely different. In basketball, the one guy controls the game completely. Look at a LeBron James. Yeah, put LeBron you know, on just about there. any team. You know, LeBron is untradeable. I wouldn't trade the next three first. I wouldn't trade the next three first overall picks for LeBron if I were the Heat. You know, that's how much I. That's how much I, LeBron should be valued in the NBA. He's by far the best player in the NBA. Nobody comes close to him other than Durant, and that's it. And I still think LeBron's a better leader than Kevin Durant. And of course, that's where we're at now. Is that the Heat don't have the say this summer? It's going to be LeBron's call what he wants to do. Hmm. And I think it's going to be very tough to maintain LeBron in the Heat uniform because I say this. Opting in for one year, okay, I think that's a definite possibility. But long term, I cannot see him signing a four- or five-year deal with Dwayne Wade being his age, Ray Allen being his age, Chris Bosh potentially opting out. You know, I, I think Bosh opts out and takes the money. He's got no reason to stay in Miami unless he wants more rings, but the guy's already a Hall of Famer. Bosh will be a Hall of Famer. Really? Bosh is a Hall of Famer? What has he been? Eight or nine time all nine time all star? Eight or nine time all star. He's won two rings, been to three titles. How is he not? How is he not a Hall of Famer? Uh, uh, all right. I don't know. Don't don't forget, like seven guys in the NBA make the Hall of Fame each year, and there's only twelve guys on a roster, thirteen guys on a roster. So think about that. It's not you know the NFL. The, Major League Baseball is by far the hardest to get to the Hall of Fame. There's guys there's because there's years where guys don't get in. In football, you know, like you said, football you have your select few every year, and that's it. In, in basketball, there's multiple guys that can never, you know, there are guys, plenty of guys who are Hall of Famers in the NBA that wouldn't be Hall of Famers in other sports. I, I don't know. I just, Chris Bosh is an all star, is a, is a Hall of Famer. That's, that's just a little. He's, he will be a Hall of Famer. I'm willing to all right. I, I, I will, I will acquiesce to that. I will, I will say, all right, mark it down. Let's see who's right at the end of the day. I... Bosh will be a Hall of Famer. He's in book it. <laughs> all right, booked. Um, God, this is this is so cool, though. I, th- this is exactly w- what the Cavs needed. And, and I, I'll, I'll never forget talking about this a couple of years ago when the Cavaliers, you know, when, when they got Kyrie Irving, because essentially that pick was the eighth pick. It was a pick they shouldn't have had, that, but Donald Sterling wanted to get rid of Baron Davis that badly. And Cavs fans, honestly, as much of an ass as Donald Sterling is, should love him because that trade was a net him Kyrie Irving, because Donald Sterling was a moron and couldn't deal with Baron Davis. You know, he hated him that much, wanted him out of there that quickly, and, you know, and gave him an unprotected first-round pick. Unprotected. He could have at least done top three. They didn't put any protection on the pick. And Chris Grant ripped him off. You know, but don't forget the Cavs pick was the one that landed the fourth overall pick. It wasn't their pick that got the number one. It was LA's that was slated to be eighth overall. Yeah, see, that, that that's interesting that the Cavs fans owe Donald Sterling a thank you. For for, it's for much, Kyrie. It's like I said, you don't actually owe him a thank you, but you know, you, you know what I'm getting at, right? <laughs> now. I, I, yeah, I know what you're getting at. No, I, I, and that was a great move by Chris Grant. Yeah, but like I said, he still whipped on the Thompson pick. He whipped on the Waiters pick. He pretty much whipped on the Bennett pick. <laughs> you know, three strikes and you're out, and he was gone. You know, Mike Brown's gone. Chris Grant's gone. My, it's Dave just... Griffin's turn to run the show, and I think he landed in position of just a pot of gold tonight. Yeah, and it's it's going to be – see, now so, – so what do you see happening with Kevin Love? There are so many options out there, and I'm, I'm hearing well, a couple of teams are interested or well, he's interested in a few teams. I don't think Golden State trades David Lee and Clay Thompson for him. I just don't. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. Now, I could be wrong on so many levels, but if, that, if that's the trade, if that's the trade that, that Golden State's willing to offer – that's the trade Minnesota is going to accept because of Clay Thompson and David Lee is still a serviceable NBA player. It puts the team in a you know puts the team in a playoff position. Uh, I think right now that but but Golden State has been reluctant to include Clay Thompson in any deal from what I'm hearing so, what, what I'm hearing. So I don't think that happened. Now Cleveland has a lot of young talent they can offer. Like I said, you've got Bennett, you've got Verge out, you've got Thompson, and you've got Waiters, and you've got the number one overall pick, and you've got Memphis's future pick. You're loaded. You can offer up five different packages of players and picks in order to try to get Kevin Love. And one of those one of those offers guarantee will get Kevin Love. 
that might be the number one overall pick if the Cavaliers were willing to surrender, but they might not have to in order to get Kevin Love. Minnesota, don't forget, does not have the upper hand in anything right now. Minnesota will lose him at the end of the year, and they know they're not going to win a championship with him. And every there are 29 other teams in the NBA that know that. So, so, that, so that, that that lowers the negotiating ability. You have no negotiating power. It's you know you take what you can get. You know people and saw who what better? happened. With Cleveland. People yeah. saw what happened with Cleveland. That's getting was... nothing for LeBron James. Getting nothing. And that's what I was going to say. Who better to be a trade partner than to go to the Timberwolves and be like, look, we're representing the Cavs. Hi. Um, remember what happened to us? Let me let me just paint you this picture one more time of what actually happened here. Because um, it's going to happen to you. And you should probably get something than get dumped on on live TV and have your team set exactly. back for four years. Exactly. I say, listen, we know we, he's good as good as gone. He's going, you know, the guy's already been talking about playing with the L.A. Lakers or playing, playing, playing somewhere else. He's gone. It's not like, it's not like you're sitting there. It's not like you can go to Portland and say, listen, Lamar's told her he's Aldridge is no bet to leave. Aldridge has got a good team around him in Portland. I think Aldridge has a good chance of staying in Portland. I don't see him leaving right now, just right now. He seems to be a loyal guy. I think he's a perfect fit up in Portland. And Portland, like I said, just made the second round of the playoffs. If they're not, you know, Portland's not too far off. You know, Lillard's only getting better. Aldridge is reaching his peak. So I think it's one of those teams there. I don't think Portland goes and sits there and puts Aldridge on the block this summer. Now, I could be wrong, but I, I, I think going into this season, going into last season, I think he was on the block. He was starting to be, but they were still reluctant to give him up a year ago. And after this kind of season Portland had this year, they weren't giving him up. So I think Love is very – I think Love, Minnesota, has to get rid of him and get something. Paul George is ridiculous, by the way. I'm sorry, you just ran the three. So – That would make Pacers up uh, 73-69, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, I go, okay, look at, look at the deal. Either you can get I'm in Shumpert from the Knicks – another crappy draft pick, but the problem is with the steeping rules, you cannot trade first-round picks in consecutive years. You cannot trade first-round picks. You can only do every other year. You cannot trade your first-round pick in consecutive years. And since the Knicks traded away this year's first-round pick, they can't offer up next year's. Mm, they've so kind of hamstrung them. themselves, so, yeah. So who do you put, who do you, what do you surround a package around Iman Shumpert, who's a mediocre NBA player, at best one of the most overrated players in the league? I just don't think he's that good. And Dwayne Wade may have just torn his ACL. Oh, I, I don't know. He looks, he looks hurt. He always looks hurt, though. I know he's always hurt, but I'm sure he'll be okay. I'm sure he'll get up and play. But it looked like that when he fell. I was like, oh god. Oh, you know what? You know what? Something, something. Uh, as you're talking about Dwayne Wade, maybe tearing his ACL, and he always looks hurt. Whatever. I just, um, let me tell yeah, you. I think it looked like he bumped his kneecap pretty badly against Paul George's head. Your head got in the way of my knee. Um, no, I, I want to say this because uh, a group of retired NFL players just said in a lawsuit filed today that the league, thirsty for profits, illegally supplied them with risky narcotics and other painkillers that numbed their injuries for games and led to medical complications down the road. It's just interesting because someone like Dwayne Wade, whose knee is always bothering it, do it doesn't surprise me one bit. You had a lot of players, especially during the 80s, that, you know, I mean, these guys are in so much pain. You had a lot of, I'm not, I'm not even going to say it, but a lot of the Browns players, half that team in the 80s were, was in rehab. You know, for, for, you know, a lot of them had coke problems. And it's just a lot of those players were there. Whether it was the owner's son, David Modell was there. You know, there were a lot of players there. Kevin Mack. Yeah, you know, I was talking about Kevin Mack you know, the other day. A lot of these players had severe pain. They got addicted to drugs. It was also the partying lifestyle, too, you know. Like I said, getting back to the NBA, I think we can comment on the NFL maybe next week. But <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but but like we said, were... I just don't want to get sidetracked in the show tonight. Yeah, because we cause we... I think this is the first time we've ever stayed on topic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we've ever stayed on topic. You might be onto something there. Um, no, I but... always change the subject. One of us always does, and we always get sidetracked. So no, that that is a very good point. We we're talking about the Knicks and where are the possible landing sites. You said the Lakers for Kevin Kevin Love. Right now is all I'm focused on. Um, the problem is the Lakers don't have anything to give up other than perfect. the draft pick. They, I like they don't it. have any young talent to give up. Fantastic. So the Lakers are out. The Knicks are you out. Know, Portland's probably is, you, out. Warriors are probably out. 
Well, I'm saying Portland's out because Portland's not going to trade Lamarcus Aldridge or Kevin Love. They're not stupid enough to do that. Something like that. I'm just saying that just I don't think Lamarcus Aldridge is on the table. I think Lamarcus Aldridge a year ago, the Cavaliers tried to pl- pluck him out of there for the number one overall pick last year, and were unsuccessful doing it. Now that could change this year, but I still don't think Portland bites on it. And but I'm saying though, you know, don't forget a couple of years ago. You know, this, this we're talking 2006, 2007. I'll never forget when L.A. was talking about acquiring Jason Kidd and giving up a young 20-year-old Andrew Bynum. Oh, yeah. Don't, I, I mean, that's something we can't forget. I'll never forget that being a college freshman saying, sitting there, turning on ESPN every day and hearing the rumor going, Andrew Bynum for Jason Kidd to the Nets. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's a great trade for the Nets. They're getting themselves, you know, a future center, a kid who's from New Jersey. It could be huge for them. They need someone like that. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, the Lakers could easily win a championship. You're getting a top-tier point guard one of the best in the league. So, but, you know, luckily L.A. stuck to their guns at that point, and they wanted to buy them, and they won two rings out of it. Apparently they took all of his uh, <laughs> all of his basketball acumen along with him. He's been a cancer wherever but, he's went ever since. Yeah, he has, but, I mean, he's a cancer in L.A. too for the most part, but we'll get, we'll get aside with that and getting back to the trade talk. There are teams out there now, you know, Boston, Boston, if they want to go after Kevin Love, yeah, they've got ammo too. You can offer up the, I think they're at I think there's a six pick, and you can offer up him. You can offer the six pick, and you can offer up Jared Sullinger in a deal too. Sullinger, huh? That, that's another thing too. You can package away Sullinger and maybe Kelly Olynyk in a deal and try to package and get Kevin. Look, but what what would entice Kevin Love to to stay for around for a longer time? And all you have is Rajon Rondo there. So I I, I think Boston, I, I think Boston would be a big mistake trading for him too. I think it's a huge mistake trading for him. So. You, obviously, Brooklyn can't do it. You can go down the board here. You know, Washington's not Washington's not going to make that deal. They don't have anything to give up other than Bradley Beal, and they wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. Orlando and Miami don't have the room to make the deal. I don't think Dallas has the, Dallas has nothing to offer up. So there's a very you know I think Houston's the most I think Houston's the most viable trade partner other than the Cavaliers because they can sit there, offer up Terrence Jones. You can offer up Chandler Parsons, and at that point. You're sitting there saying, okay, you know, if I'm Houston, that's a trade I'm seriously considering. Because Parsons is not a complimentary piece. Parsons is the guy you can build around. He's not, you know, Parsons is a great third or fourth option on a really, really, really good team. But not more the like man. a fourth, more like a fourth, a great fourth option. And Terrence Jones is another guy you can build around too. He's young. You know, you know how much I liked him at Kentucky a few years ago. I really liked the kid. Mm-hmm. And Houston, you know, Houston, might, I think Houston will be the Cavaliers' biggest competitor along with, I think, another team, too, is the Chicago Bulls who can get heavily involved. Yeah, I was going to ask about the Suns and the Bulls. And I'll say this right now, because you have Nikola Mirotic in, um, in, over in Europe right now for the Bulls. Mirotic's going to be huge. You also have, you can offer up a guy like Taj Gibson. You do have young talent you can offer. So a guy like Mirotic and Pick, you can offer up that kind of deal, too. So which would worry me a little bit as, you know, being from the Keller. So I think the Bulls, the Rock and the Cavaliers right now. Obviously, the Cavaliers have more to offer than any team because of the number one overall pick. That's why I'm going to put them in the front row. I just don't think they trade that number one overall for Kevin Love. I don't think I would do it gu- either. Unless you're guaranteed for him to resign. Yeah, and that's, that, that's what I was going to say with Kevin Love. This whole, I, I think, coming off of the heels of the uh, Dwight Howard rent a year fiasco. Um, I mean, that it's really set the LA. Lakers back. The thing Dwight, didn't leave, Dwight didn't leave Cleveland, Dwight didn't leave Charlotte. He were in Milwaukee. Dwight left L.A. He left the Lakers. Oh, God, David West, man. But, I mean, the thing is, it's not like he went there and he left. It's not like he left a team that, ooh. It's not like he left a team that was sitting there going to be, you know, that was, I mean, the Los Angeles, the Lakers are the mecca of all basketball. They're the Yankees of the NBA. And he left and it. And he left. And that's what I'm saying. I think I think that the Cavs are going to be savvy enough to, you know, if we're – see, I'm just wondering. It reminds me of when I put together my fantasy um, – well, I, actually, my intramural basketball team. Uh, all the best players didn't like the, the head coach at my high school that year. And so all the best players that should have been playing on our high school team, they weren't. And so I went to all of them and I said, hey, do you want to be on my intramural team? They said, who's on your team? And I rattled off that list of 10 amazing players. I said, really? They're on your team? Yeah, I'm in. And I'm like, whew, perfect. I have one. Then I went to all two, three, four. I I talked to all 10 of them. And because I told them that was the team I'm building, 
they all joined, and that was actually the team that I had. So I'm wondering when it comes to the Cavs coach with LeBron, with Kevin Love, with Kyrie Irving, to, like, set everything up in advance and then just, like, you click the dominoes. Kyrie signs his extension. LeBron switches teams. The coach comes in. Kevin Love is dealt for X, Y, Z. Um, and have it all kind of happen simultaneously. At least that's what's happening yeah, in my head. Exactly like what I'm saying, though. The Cavaliers can sit there now, trap the number one overall pick. You can, like I said, you still have a lot of ammo to go and get Kevin Love. You know, whether you start involving a third team in this, you can, like I said, you have four guys you can involve in a trade who will all bring back some kind of value. Like I said, whether it's Verichel, whether it's Bennett, Thompson, or Waiters. And believe it or not, Anthony Bennett still has value. Yeah, yeah. Tristan Thompson is the first guy I would trade away because I don't think he's worth picking up the option next year. That's why I would trade Thompson. So the Cav- you, you would say that, that the Cavs are right in the thick of things for the Kevin Love thing. Just hands down, we're yeah. in the thick of things. Of course. All right, well, well good. That's, that's all I wanted to hear because we got to build our new three. We need, like, Love, LeBron, Kyrie. Then who's left? Do we, are we able to keep that pick? God, if we kept that pick, could you imagine a team with Kevin Love, LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Andrew Wiggins? It, it, it is unlikely that happens, but I'm saying it is possible. Uh, why would that be unlikely? I... I, just say, I mean, like I said, Cleveland fans have a tendency to dream. I have a tendency <laughs> to dream, too. I mean, that would be the ultimate jealousy in the NBA. I think every person in the NBA, I think everybody would be like, okay, this is the most unfair thing I've ever seen. <laughs> It's been unfair being a Cleveland Cavs fan for most of my existence, but yeah, I I, I know what you mean. It, it's it's going to be interesting, but yeah, I don't think we get the deal done unless Love resigns. Says, hey, you know, we got Kyrie, we got you know, we're drafting Wiggins, you know, we're in the hunt for LeBron. We don't have an answer yet, but this is a solid team we're building here long term. We're going to pay you what you're worth, but we need you to resign. Um, I can tell you right now, if you put those four in a guy, I mean, you're going to have a lot of Clevelanders roster baiting that team. So, yeah, I said it, roster baiting. I, I had to do a double check. I, wait, I think I heard what he said. Wait, no, no, roster baiting. Okay. Did, wait, did you did yeah, you coin it, that term, or you've heard that somewhere? Maybe from Turtle? That's the term from the league. I can't take credit for it. Ah, okay, okay. No, I've only but it's seen... one of my favorite terms. <laughs> roster baiting. No, this is this is great, though. I mean, th- th- this, this gives the Cavs a brand new opportunity here. Last year, the Anthony Bennett pick, cool, whatever. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how he progresses. But this is one of those years... This is a superstar draft. I mean, could this be like a, 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 a LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade kind of draft? Maybe. I don't know if it's that good. I mean, because I don't know if there's a LeBron in this draft. I, I think Andrew Wiggins is very, 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 very good. But, you know, his potential is ceiling. It, it's, you know, there, there's no, you know, there's no limit, you know, on the kid's potential. But is he, is he, will he ever be as good as LeBron? I doubt that. You know, LeBron's LeBron. LeBron, LeBron could in very well probably will go down as the greatest player, if not the second greatest player of all time. That is possible. And likely. If he continues, yeah. I mean, he's, he's been, like, one of the most consistent players I've ever seen. Yeah. But I'd rather see him in a Cavs on. uniform. Uh, you know, and what is it, the Heat just went up by a couple couple now? Five. Five. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's going to be interesting, and and we have a month. I the draft is going to be, I believe, June twenty fourth or twenty sixth. So somewhere around there. Yeah, we got a month, and and a lot of people are saying look for Kevin Love to be dealt pretty quick, uh, shortly after the uh, draft rankings are announced. And yeah, I don't I don't think we 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 give up the number one pick for for Kevin Love. I think we have a lot of tradable assets and some stuff down the road. Like you said, oh, remind me one more time with that Memphis pick, with the, the, the lottery pick. It's a guaranteed lottery pick, somewhere between 2015 and 2020. How did, how did, how did the exactly. Cavs get this? John Lohr. The John Lohr trade when they acquired Maurice Spates and Wayne Ellington a year ago. Oh. Okay. So that's a piece. You can have this, which mm-hmm. could lead to a number one pick, and who knows who's going to be a star then. You could have a Anderson Verjao, a Tristan Thompson, a, you know, like... Whatever, a Dion Waiters, Anthony Bennett, cool. Take some, take some stuff, take some picks, take some peeps, and we'll take Love off your hands as long as he resigns. And then if we get Love mm-hmm. teamed up with Kyrie, 
Who, who's, by the way, okay, let's just wrap it up on this end. Who's going to be the Cavs coach? Now that we have the number one pick, now that we have flexibility, uh, who do you think the new Cavs GM has his eyes set on? Who do you think would be the best fit for I young I still think Kyrie? it's going to be Calipari. And I, like I said, even though Kevin Holley signed an extension, I still say they try to go after him again. Like I said, the market just opened up for every coach who closed his door on the Cavaliers to just reopen. <laughs> it did. It did. It seriously did. That makes me really happy. I'm, I'm being 100% serious when I say that their door just reopened. Because there's that much talent there with that number one pick. Yep. This is awesome. No, this is good. So th- then I'll tell you what, we're going to have plenty more to talk about, Zach. This is going to be a, a pretty interesting few weeks. I, I'm calling Kevin Love comes out to Cleveland, unless he has another grand plan in action. Uh, but really, it's going to be up to the Timberwolves. Well, I said the Cavaliers will not trade that number one. What's up? Um, oh, they are. Without getting an extension sign. Now, I think they would trade the other guys, you know, for Kevin Love with, without getting an extension sign. I think there's two different ways. You do not trade Andrew Wiggins for a guy you're getting a one year, you're getting one year of. Yeah, you know, rental. Like I said, I would trade Waiters and those guys. Because like I said, Waiters, Wiggins, I mean, Wiggins, Kyrie, and Love, even that still is a good core for the future. Yeah, with I think you get with Kyrie or without LeBron. Long. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. This is awesome, though. I, I, I'm so happy now. I call this the happy hour. I can't believe I did it, but I, th- this is one of those moments where your franchise really can, kind of go in the right direction. I thought for most, of the, for the better part of this year, you've been telling me for how long how great that this year's crop of talent is. You know, picking Anthony Bennett and just watching him not really take off until you know really toward the end of the season. Uh, really disappointing. Really disappointing and I also year said, for Cavs. And I also said the Cavaliers didn't suck enough. I, I said that was the problem all season too. They didn't suck bad enough. Yeah, yeah. They didn't shut Kyrie down. They didn't exactly. They, they, they were they were too good to get that top pick, and then they, they they sucked too much to actually crack the playoffs. So just this right now, I, I I'm nearly speechless that it actually happened. Nearly speechless. So. I'm beyond excited, and I know that you've been so high on Andrew Wiggins for so long. Uh, I mean, Jabari Parker, Dante Axum, Joel Embiid, all these guys, like, there's a lot of talent there. Um, but knowing that we get the first crack at it, you know, our, our new GM gets a chance to um, – this is going to be his make-or-break moment, you know. This is his chance to do what he wants to do, and he has the, the right tools. It's one thing to want to build a table, but you don't have a hammer or a saw. Um, he has the tools now, so. Uh, fi- agree. Yeah. Final word to you then. Hi- w- w- any any surprising moves? Any 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 roster moves that that we might be expecting in the next few weeks? Anything on the radar that? With the Cavaliers, I have a feeling you're going to see them sit pretty quiet. They're going to be pretty quiet until after the NBA Finals are over. That's just I, I have a feeling the trade talks are obviously going to swirl. But I think you're going to see coaching. I, I tend to think I don't think they hire a coach in the next couple of weeks. I think they wait, and I think they wait for a very good reason. A former MVP, good reason. Possibly, you know. Like I said, they're not going to jump the gun. I don't think they're stupid enough. I think Gilbert needs to be patient. I think he made. I think he knows he made another mistake last year with Mike Brown, obviously by firing him right away. So you know that you've made mistakes now. You know, let David Griffin do his job. He can obviously do his job. He did a nice job for the Cavaliers when he took over his GM last year. I think the guy knows what he's doing, you know, and I think he's more open to trading than Chris Grant was. Chris Grant would have offered up Deion Waiters for Kevin Love. Yeah, trying to get the huge steal without You know, you know it doesn't happen. Nobody's that stupid. David Tom's no longer the GM in Minnesota. Nobody's that stupid. <laughs> So, so then, then you're just basically like tempering my enthusiasm, saying, Brian, just uh, if if things are slow for a several weeks until the finals are over, d- d- don't be too surprised if you don't hear too much more from yeah. From Cavs I, I think you're going to see some heavy maneuvering though with the Cavaliers roster. I, I really do, I really do. You need to add some veteran pieces in there, and some ones that are going to help, you know, with the maturity of this team. And you need to surround them with people that have been to the playoffs. You know, obviously, Will Dang didn't help. Uh, which I was actually very surprised about. Luol Deng but, helped for a little while. I I saw him play not, some decent ball. He played some decent ball, but he wasn't very valuable to the Cavs like he was in Chicago. But like I said, Chicago didn't seem to miss him one bit, which I was shocked. Yeah, and, and, and Luol Deng is going to be gone next year. We don't even mention him in the conversation. It's almost as good as gone. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's interesting, though, with, with Ricky Rubio, you know, publicly calling out Kevin Love's leadership and stuff. And, you know, I mean, you, you have egos clash all the time, but, you know, sometimes the best thing for all parties involved is just hit reset and start something different. And uh, really, tonight, the Cavs had the opportunity to hit reset and do something different. So, Zach, I, I appreciate you uh, availing yourself on short notice. And uh, d- d- there's nobody we'd rather be talking to on a night when the Cavs, at the 1.7% chance to get the number one pick, got it tonight. So, uh, once again, this as always. Yearly, this is our yearly conversation. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just didn't expect to be this excited about the NBA draft right now. And uh, it's, it was just very pleasant news. One of those moments where you're always going to remember where you were because, uh, you know, whether there's a LeBron James in this draft or not, uh, I've been hearing about Andrew Wiggins and Jabari Parker and some of these guys for long enough where I know this is a great time to be sitting at number one. So, uh, Zach, thanks again for joining the show. And, and for the listeners, if you haven't followed Zach, you should follow him on Twitter. He's at Z Barris. That's Z-B-A-R-I-S. I appreciate your time as always, buddy. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Go Cavs. All right. Thanks a lot. And it's been a great moment to be a Cavs fan and really a Cleveland fan in general, just with with everything that's going on. Of course, the Josh Gordon thing doesn't help very much, but Josh Gordon, uh, Johnny Manziel, now the Cavs have the number one pick. Who are we bringing in? Is it Andrew Wiggins? It's pretty exciting. So thank you so much for listening. My name is Brian Engelman. I'm the host who has been here for three years of the Unhappy Hour, and it was fun to bring you a an episode of the happy hour for once please do us a favor and check out our homepage, the new americanmedia.com because the old american media has failed us uh, check us out on youtube youtube.com slash the new american media and subscribe to the channel also on facebook do a search for the new american media and then like the page join us over there and on twitter we're at american underscore media underscore so those are all the ways you, you can follow us you know whether you like our sports our politics, our spirituality, our financial stuff, our, our, our humor, our music. We do a lot of different things at the New American Media, and we're nothing without you. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Go Cavs, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Peace. unhappyhour on the new americanmedia.com